Hi, I'm Mike Christiansen. In this blog, I'd like to give you some tips on how to practice. Sometimes we assume that our students just know how to practice and uh, they don't, usually. So we have to guide them along on how to practice. You might find some tips in here on uh, things to improve your own practicing. So let me just go through a list of, uh, in uh, no real particular order here, but just uh, some things to keep in mind to maybe um, get the most out of your practice time. One of the things that you should do first is to practice with a goal. Uh, have a direction where you're going with the practice. Don't just sit down, although sometimes it is okay to just sit down and doodle for a little while. It's probably a good idea when you get into the serious practicing to have a goal in mind. Uh, I've even gone so far and I've encouraged my students to write the goals down. Uh, my uh, particular um, practice goal is to be able to play this piece at this tempo or, or get rid of the pauses in between the chords or to memorize a particular tune. Now one of the things you have to remember if you're practicing with a goal in mind is to make those goals attainable. Uh, don't expect too much of yourself. Make the, make the goal, goals a little bit shorter and uh, make them so you, know, you think, well, I, I will be able to reach that goal by this particular time. So practice with a goal in mind. The next thing probably is have a set time to practice. Um, with our busy lives and schedules, it's, it's hard to find maybe a particular time every day to practice at the same time. But for young students, that's a very good idea. You will practice in the morning before you go to school at this time or in the evening at this time. This is your practice time. Or when you get home before, uh, before you go do some other activities when you get home from school, have a set time to practice. The other thing you can do is organize your practice time. This uh, sandwich method of practicing is really a good idea. When you begin to learn a piece, uh, don't just start off with it, the, or when you get your practicing, don't just start off with something that's really heavy to practice at first. Play some things you already know and then practice the piece that you're working on and then come back to what you um, already know. Never end your practice session on material that you're trying to learn at that time, some of the heavy stuff. For example, if you're trying to learn how to play Asturias, you're probably not just gonna pick up your guitar and go, oh, it's not too hard. You know, it's gonna be, But before I do that, I would play some things maybe that I played before, things that I know that are fairly simple for me to do. Then I'll spend the time, I'll work on the, the, the piece that's heavy or, or my new material. But then when I finish my practicing, play something that I know, something that, that I can play, something that I'm comfortable with. So sandwich the new stuff you're learning in between familiar material. Also practice in a comfortable, uh, comfortable environment. It's uh, really nice if you can practice in a place where there's good lighting and uh, you've got, uh, if you're playing along with some play-alongs, you've got your um, sound equipment there that you can practice with. Um, if you're using blended learning, that's a, that's a great uh, devices to have your computer or your iPad or your phone or whatever there and so you can uh, uh, practice along with that material. Sometimes you're practicing, if you're practicing in an environment where there's a lot of interruptions, uh, you might not get as much done. Uh, that being said, we'll talk about uh, when you can use that to your advantage a little bit too a little bit later on. But practice your new music in segments. So don't practice the whole piece. Uh, don't practice from the top of the music and go down to the bottom. I, I probably preach into the choir here, but practice a small section at a time and so you can isolate those problem areas. I can remember studying with a, a teacher once and I was playing a piece of music and he said, you know, I'll bet you practice this probably 20 or 30 times a day. And I said, I was real proud of myself. And I said, yep, I, every day I practice the whole thing 20 or 30 times. And, and he said, what a waste of time. <laughs> and I was just kind of shocked and he said, you don't need to practice the whole piece. You only have a problem with these two measures and these two measures and this one spot here. So just practice those places 20 or 30 times and then put the whole piece together. A great piece of advice. Uh, so isolate those problem areas. Another thing is have a performance goal. Nothing motivates practice more than having a performance goal coming up. We have a recital coming up, we have a concert coming up, so have some kind of a performance goal, even if it's just playing for the, uh, for the family 
or, or some activity where your friends are gonna be there. Have that performance goal set for your students and also set for yourself. Another important aspect of practicing, don't practice your mistakes. <laughs> I've been guilty of that many times in my life. When, when you're learning a piece of music, make sure that you get the fingering correct. Make sure that you get the rhythm correct. Play it slowly and look for all the little particulars in the music, even the dynamics, and make sure that you're playing them correctly. If you play the wrong fingering for uh, you know a dozen times while you're playing the piece, it's harder to unlearn than it is to learn. So, so make sure that you've got all those bugs worked out while you're going so you're not practicing your, your mistakes. Practice mentally then physically. When I get a piece of music for the first time, sometimes I'll say, and this is a, a trick too that studios players use sometimes, sit the music down, uh, look through the music first, and imagine yourself playing it. You know, the, oh, there's a fingering there I've got to be careful of, or there's a chord that I've got to, I've got to be cautious of. Watch that rhythm right there. So I practice it mentally. I go through the piece mentally, and then physically I start to practice the piece. Avoid boredom. If the music is getting boring to you, uh, don't punish yourself. Take a little break or play some fun music or uh, go to another part of your lesson that you might find just a, a little bit more fun. We all have to pay our dues and play stuff maybe that we're not too excited about, but avoid getting bored with it. You don't want to pull this thing uh, down so low that it's not fun. You want to have some fun. Okay, and we talked a little bit about um, this uh, sandwich method of practicing, and that will help you to develop some concentration. Um, if you can uh, mix the new material in with familiar material, it really does help you develop your concentration so you can focus for maybe that short period of time on that new material. You can really hone in on your concentration on the, the one particular skill you're trying to work on. You know, another good thing is to think back on advice from your teacher. What, what did my teacher tell me in my lesson that I've got to work on? Or when I heard my teacher play it, what did I notice when the teacher played it? Uh, a really good a trick in um, practicing is to record yourself. I'm surprised at how many times students don't record themselves uh, practicing. So record yourself and then listen to it and say, you know, if I was the teacher, what would I tell that student that they had to work on? It, uh, you know, what, what spots have to be worked on? So you can do a lot by teaching yourself. Be positive and up. Uh, think of the rewards you'll have from being able to play this music one day. And uh, sometimes it's always good to look back. You know, sometimes I think students always think they're, they're looking ahead. And uh, sometimes it's good to look back and say, wow, you know, I've, I've really come a long way. Uh, I can play this piece, this part of the piece. I couldn't play that before. So it's good to think back on, on how far you've come, not only where you have to go. You don't want to drag yourself down by saying, oh, I've, I'll never be able to do that. It's so hard. But if you look back and say, well, look how far I've come, that's a great source of motivation. Remember that you have to enjoy the journey. Here's one more tip. Let someone hear you practice. Uh, that's good to get over the jitters of playing in front of people, but it's also uh, it's just a good practice technique and it will motivate your practicing. Let someone hear you play, maybe even if they're not focusing on you playing, they're just sitting over there reading a magazine or something and you're practicing your guitar, but let them hear you play. I had an adult student once that had uh, really had the jitters and got stage fright real, you know, they had a bad case of it. And so I wanted him to practice in front of people and he, he couldn't do that. He said he'd just have a meltdown when he played in front of people. So I said, have you got any pets? And he said, well, I have a dog. And I said, so have the dog come in and sit the dog down and practice for the dog. You know, play some things for your dog. What was funny, he said for the first little while, he was scared to death playing for the dog. I mean, dog was focusing all of his attention on him and he got a little nervous playing for the dog. But he built up that security of playing with, for the dog, and then he could play for some friends when you know they weren't really noticing. It wasn't really a concert situation, but uh, he built up that security of playing uh, for the friends, and then eventually got to the point where it wasn't that much of a problem for him to play in front of people, playing like in a concert or a gig type situation. Okay, so maybe you've picked up some tips here, I hope you have, on how to improve your practicing and tips that you can pass on to your students to help them improve their practicing. Remember to be dedicated, not just talented. 
Uh, I always have to laugh when people came up, come up and they say, boy, I don't have the talent that you do. And I feel like telling them, no, what you don't have is the dedication that I had. I think far fewer people uh, suffer from a lack of talent than suffer from a lack of dedication. So good luck with your practicing. Thank you.